There's been a concerning increase in doctors' unemployment rate in South Africa. Now, according to the latest report, 694 recently qualified doctors are having difficulty finding employment following their community service. Now, the question is, how does the unemployment issue among medical professionals add to the uncertainty in South Africa's healthcare landscape? Well, stick around as we unpack that. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined virtually by 25-year-old uh, Dr. Takhalu Tibela, who is the youngest female practicing medical doctor in South Africa, starting at the age of 21. Uh, Dr. Tibela is here to tell us about her experience as an unemployed doctor in the country trying to find work. She's joining me via Zoom. Uh, Dr. Tibela, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, before we get into some of the challenges, you know, as I highlighted, uh, you know, the challenges that are faced by doctors there. I mean, you were reported as the youngest doctor in South Africa at the age of 21. Maybe you can briefly just tell us about your childhood as a, you know, scholar, finding yourself uh, as the youngest practicing doctor in the nation today. And also, I mean, how, uh, you know, um, the journey started for you. Gladly. Um, so I've always been blessed and very privileged to have worked the journey that I've worked. Um, so I've always, growing up, wanted to be a doctor ever since I can remember, ever since, you know, preschool, primary school, whatever, that has always been me. And that has also been reflected in um, the way I conducted myself all those years. So I've always wanted to be that person who was the top of the class, top of the grade, everywhere I went. And um, being that person, I guess, helped me um, achieve what I've achieved so far. So um, in primary school, um, I remember being called into the primary, I mean, the principal's office, being told that I'm not going to do grade seven the next year. Um, the same thing happened when I was in high school. I was told I wasn't going to do grade nine. And that led to me graduating at 15. Um, so I started medical school at 15 when I was turning 16. And... Yes, so um, studying med school at that age made me able to graduate at 21. So after graduating at 21 at Bush University, I then proceeded to do my internship at Helen Joseph Hospital in Johannesburg. And last year I was doing my community service at Mapulanen Hospital in Bushwick Ridge. Mm. I mean, uh, talk to us about, uh, you know, uh, the challenges that you experience every day. I mean, knowing that you have a qualification, but uh, you are struggling, you know, with finding employment. How is it affecting you and your family? I mean, uh, you know, you're one of the hundreds of doctors that are still knocking at every door trying to get uh, that employment. Huh, um it's really disheartening because when you are in high school, for example, when you're still looking for a career to get into, you get told that, you know, medicine is one of the careers where, you know, you are set for life. When you become a doctor, you will never struggle. You always have a job. You know, people will be fighting over you. <laughs> um, so when now such things happen, you tend to question um, what the country has come to. And I'm not saying, um, you know, because I've, I've heard people say that doctors are not important, everyone else is struggling, which is, which is, which is true. Um, there, are very, uh, there are a lot of professions that are in the same situation, and it's very unfortunate. And um, I think what makes it worse is because now this is spilling over into the healthcare system. And the issue with that is we have long lines of patients waiting, needing the healthcare that we can provide but we're finding ourselves in the situation where we can't provide that. For me personally, um, I had my whole life planned and unfortunately scripture does say that you make plans, but God, you know, decides. So I then see myself in the situation that I'm in now. Um, and that has been very taxing mentally, financially, emotionally, you know, people, you walk around, they call you doctor, but you don't, feel like one because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as a doctor and that in itself is very disheartening because you feel like what's the point why did I get into this field if it means I can't actually practice as one and you get people I'm um, telling you you know it's fine you can just go 
wherever you can branch out of medicine and do these other things but i came into medicine because i wanted to be a medical doctor i wanted to see treat and help patients so not being able to do that is really disheartening and i hope hopefully soon enough i'll be able to go back to doing what i've always wanted to do and what i actually love doing mm. i mean uh, dr tibela uh, you know there's been word going around that uh, um you know Somewhere, somehow, doctors that are coming from other countries uh, are, are being prioritized in the country. I mean, I just want to get your opinion as a person who's unemployed. Uh, you know, how does that make you feel uh, that, uh, you know, there is that thing that, look, people that are coming from other countries, uh, you know, especially medical doctors, they're being given first preference, uh, uh, you know, than locals. Um. I've heard that word, but I'm not sure of its validity. Um, for example, in the hospital that I was working at last year, I didn't see that happen firsthand. And even when I talk to my colleagues who are employed in other hospitals, that doesn't seem to be what we are observing. So it seems like everyone is currently struggling and it doesn't seem like anyone is like preferred over anyone else. If anything, I do feel like we as South Africans are the preference, especially as um, those who have buzzeries. So they are preferred so they can, you know, go back and serve and pay back the state for putting them into school. As far as other nation nationals coming into the space, I can't really comment on that because I don't have first-hand experience and I don't know how true or valid that statement is. Mm. Now let's hold it there, uh, Dr. Tibela. We're going to take a quick ad break. Dr. Takalo Tibela there talking to us about her experience as an unemployed doctor in the country searching for work. We will bring her back again uh, a bit later on. But for now, after the ad break, uh, we loop in the National Health Care Professionals Association into the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. We are still unpacking the concerning issue of doctors and other healthcare professionals, unemployment in the country. Let me bring in uh, my guest, Dr. Donald Gumeda, who is the chairperson at the National Healthcare Professionals Association, just to tell us about what the organization has done, you know, to support the unemployed healthcare professionals and also just a support structure because, you know, they have raised their concerns previously about the current situation. Doc, much appreciated for coming in. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, Doc, you know, I mean, there's quite a lot of issues. You're back here yeah. again. I mean, we've spoken so, about this. Yeah. Doctors are unemployed, and not only doctors, there's yeah. quite a lot of uh, health professionals there. Uh, maybe let's start from where we left it uh, yes. previously. Yes. Has there been any progress with this? Yes, um, thank you very much for bringing me back. Um, the National Treasury uh, with the Department of Health, uh, as a matter of fact, I was in one of the meetings where we, we brainstormed about these issues because there was a need for 1.3 billion to employ or suck in the, the, the doctors who are actually unemployed now, the, the thousand uh, perpetrated. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> that money was uh, allegedly made available uh, to try and absorb the doctors into the mainstream. But then, hang on, that's for 12 months, remember? That 1.3 billion. Yeah. So it's not sustainable. That's why in that meeting I, I raised the issue that we needed a short, medium, and a long-term solution. Because we can't keep on talking about this issue. This issue has been rolling through yeah. ever since 2014. It just changes characters but the storylines are still the same. So that the biggest problem is what we spoke about previously, the, 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 the debt, the GDP de, uh, debt ratio yeah. of our country, which actually is not favorable to create any type of employment, you mm -hmm. know? And that's why now, as I'm telling you, I even have a document with me, the Department of Health in Gauteng, they're actually withdrawing the committed overtime for doctors. So meaning if you're earning 60,000 as a doctor, you are more likely to be earning 40,000 next month. And imagine they just announced today that the petrol price is going up 
<laughs> so you see, we are trying to rob Paul to pay Peter. Mm -hmm. So we're not solving the problem. We're just juggling around uh, numbers to try and please the crisis. I mean, speaking about numbers, we saw what's been happening the past few weeks. Quite a lot of, um, uh, you know, um, promises Correct. that have been made. Uh, what is the actual number of the doctors that are unemployed? Is it this number that they're giving us or is it actually bigger than that? It is bigger than that. Actually, uh, the minister uh, put it nicely because he understood what's going on. So what, we, what happens is you have got an employment rollover. So you have those doctors who finish in December mm -hmm. and those probably who failed two modules or so and they're going to finish in March. Then they get em 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 employed that then, you see, others in June. Now when their term of employment gets finished, it, it doesn't get finished at the same time. Mm. So every day new doctors are getting uh, added to the yeah. list. And uh, I, I must emphasize one other important critical issue. Uh, as in our association, you see, we represent public and private. Yeah. We have got a lot of doctors who actually have closed their practices in private practice. Because you see, this unemployment issue is not only affecting the public. Yeah. Because you see, uh, when now uh, the crunch of the market and everything, the, the, the normal uh, uh, middle class, they reduce the, 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 the medical aid affordability to the basic normal. Now that affects your practice. Because you still have to pay rent, pay the workers, pay tax, pay everything they can afford. Hence, actually, just as a matter of fact, and it is a fact what I'm saying, we have lots of healthcare practices who are committing suicide because of actually what's happening in the, pri in the private sector. Mm. I mean, so, so what, what needs to happen? I know that we will just unpack some of the solutions that uh, are needed. We've spoken sure, about them sure, also previously. Sure. I mean, but what seems to be the major issue? Because of now you come up, uh, you know, you hear people yeah. uh, giving s promises, throwing numbers uh, at the public saying that, look, we've actually, uh, you know, going to take a certain budget and do this and that. But is there a plan or there's simply there's no plan? Truth be told, there's no plan. Because if there was a plan, we wouldn't be here. That's the thing. That's mm -hmm. the honest truth. And I mean, I'm not bashing the ruling party. If they can't pay their staff at the, to the house, how would, they, if they go to government, be able to pay government mm -hmm. employees? I mean, really, it means also they don't even have a plan for their own small constituency or their own party or anything. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need to have a long-term plan, uh, meaning you start with a short-term, medium-term, and a long-term plan. We do not have that, and that's a problem. And that brings us to that issue that we spoke about, the NHI and whatnot. Yeah. Because now, you see, you look at it this way, um, people are quick to say, let's sign the NHI bill. But we don't know the, uh, the don'ts and the, uh, the do's and the don'ts. You know, we don't know how much your salary is going to be affected. As a matter of fact, as we speak, like I'm saying, in government sectors and quarters, there's not been increments. But the other aspects of, um, of, of, of life is increasing. Your rates and taxes are increasing. Your food is increasing. Your petrol is increasing. But your salary remains standard. I mean, how are you going to afford anything? It's not possible. It has encroached now to the doctors, like yeah. I'm saying to you. Uh, there's a circular which says, do not authorize committed overtime until we tell you because there's no budget. There's budget constraints. So what it means, like I explained in the beginning, if you're earning 60,000, now your salary is going to dive to 40,000. What does it mean? You can't afford your school fees for your kids. Yeah. You can't go to work. You can't pay the bond. You're in the financial ruin and financial crisis. So there's no long-term solution to the problem from our government side. Dr. Kumaide, we're going to park it there. Um, after you. the ad break, we're going to continue the conversation. My guest is uh, Dr. Donald Kumaide from the, um, the National Healthcare Professionals Association. He's the chairperson there. We're talking more of, uh, you know, the challenges that are faced by healthcare professionals, both public and private. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are still unpacking the concerning issue of doctors and other healthcare professionals, unemployment in the country. My guest tonight 
is uh, Dr. Donald Gumede, who is the chairperson at the National Healthcare Professionals Association, uh, to tell us about, you know, more about uh, the organization also as we've been talking uh, about uh, the concerning issue of unemployment of healthcare professionals in general. Also, uh, Dr. Takalu Tibela, uh, uh, unemployed uh, doctor, they're just joining us via Zoom. Um, Dr. Gumede, let me bring you to this conversation. I mean, you heard what um, uh, Dr. Tibela has been saying that, look, when I entered um, the space, uh, yeah, 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 medicine, medicine yeah. I just thought that I was set yeah. for life. I mean, yeah. obviously that's, uh, a lot of people are thinking that way and that's how they feel because the current situation that they are facing now. Yeah, thank you very much again. You see, when I started uh, the NSCPA with some of my colleagues, we were actually trying to debunk that narrative because you see, including myself, and now I'm in my 50s, uh, when we were young, we were called the standard 10A cream de la cream. Yeah. So everything came easy, you know. But life does not work like that. And that's what I'm trying to teach healthcare professionals. In as much as it's our passion, you know, to treat patients, but you must find an extra income. Try and diversify because passion alone, most of the time, does not create wealth or stability in your life. That's the problem. Because you see, they had secured us in the olden days, okay? So you knew if you're a doctor, you're going to get a good car, you're going to get a good house, your kids will go to a good school. It has not, it's not more like that anymore. It has changed. The mm. script has flipped. So I would advise uh, that don't abandon your passion. I'm still practicing medicine because it's my passion. But I've got other things that I do as well. So do other things as well to augment so that you don't become stranded. Because as uh, Dr. Uh, Tivera says, <laughs> her car needs to be paid if she has a car. Yeah. And she's unemployed now. And if she doesn't pay the bank, I promise you they're going to come and fetch it. So you see, you must always diversify and, and, and do that. So combine your passion also with affordability where you can. It's mm -hmm. very critical and very important. And also mental health, uh, quickly, just to dip in. You know, when she's sitting at home, she's, she gets depressed because she sits down and says, but why did I spend so much effort? And I was lauded as the best, 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 this, best, this, but now I'm stuck. I can't afford even to buy ice cream. Mm. And then why? And start asking many questions. That creates depression. And that's why we've got many healthcare professionals uh, being in mental institutions. Dr. Tibela, um, let me bring you to this. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the issue of, uh, um, as you can hear Dr. Gumeda saying that, look, somehow, somehow you need to diversify and, and uh, try by all means, you know, just to come up with, uh, um, um, you know, another alternative ways that you can be able to survive, but do not abandon your passion. Uh, in general, how do you deal with uh, um, just coping with this whole situation? Uh, as uh, you know, it is obviously a difficult position to be at. Um, yes, um, so we have been talking about that with a few of my friends and colleagues actually, that it would have been helpful if as part of the medical school training, we are also taught how to, and to be entrepreneurs, you know, we're also taught the business side of medicine or just business in general, because most of us graduate medical school, all you know how to do is be a doctor, mm. you know, and so it becomes a bit challenging, especially if you do also want to branch into private practice, you want to be a general practitioner, you need to be able to work out the business aspect of it. So it would be helpful for the future generation of doctors to at least be taught True. that as part of, you know, the medical training so they don't end up like us, where you find yourself, medicine is the only thing you know how to do. And when we find ourselves in this position, you don't know how else to make a living. So, um, yes, this is something that we are exploring. Um, we have realized that, you know, like Dr. Gumera was saying, passion enough is not, passion alone is not enough to build stability. So we do need to, as medical professionals as well, um, learn other skills, learn, you know, other things so that we can also be able to survive. And also there are new, you know, ad advancements in, in terms of like um, medical technologies and things like that. So I feel like that is something that we can possibly maybe branch into and like just waiting and hoping for the government to provide and employ us. So maybe we should 
definitely look into being employable ourselves. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, we, we are running out of time, uh, Dr. Gumede, sure, but sure. I just want to sure. get your, uh, you know, yeah. uh, just uh, basically what do you think should happen now Correct. moving forward? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are hearing, you know, the department is saying that, look, yeah. the issue of placement also yeah. becomes yeah. a major problem because people do not want to move to rural areas and stuff. And then it somewhere, somehow uh, changes just the whole dynamic of placement uh, in its entirety. I'm not it's, sure what's your take on that. Yeah. And also what needs to happen moving forward. We've been talking about this. Exactly. We need to see solutions. Solutions, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm impressed because where she said she was working is a rural area. Mm -hmm. So imagine she studied at, at Vets and then decided she's going to go back to Bush Park Ridge and study there uh, and work there. It's a rural area. It's not a location. Yeah. It's, so it's, not, it's a fallacy that they don't want to go to the rural areas and work. It, our doctors, they are willing to go anywhere. That, that's the honest truth. Yeah. They are willing to go anywhere. And then secondly, uh, the issue of um, uh, getting a solution. Um, you see, our politicians will keep lying and they can lie until the sun rises and sets again. The f effect of the matter is the problem is bigger than what we're discussing now. We're just discussing the narrow field, which is yeah. medicine. But the problem is that the economy is messed up. So it, the economy cannot create jobs. That's the, that's the honest truth. Mm. So until we get our politics right and we correct the economy, and then we make sure that our economy is able to create jobs, then we will be able to, 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 to address these issues. Because you see, health, like she rightfully says, it's a fundamental thing that is enshrined in our constitution. Mm -hmm. So it's unlike the other fields. You see, health is it's enshrined, it's there. In the constitution so as, as a matter of fact we should prioritize it to be honest we should find it more because a healthy nation at least it's a, a healthy working nation if you you are sick you can't go to work so we should prioritize that but then we're not prioritizing it because we have got other agendas that we have in the, in, 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 in in our government but then we need to hold our government responsible to for this actually a uh, tragedy that is happening or that is occurring because it's disheartening how do you encourage uh, a young, and as a, again even if she wants to specialize she can't because for her to specialize she needs to be employed mm -hmm. think about it so whether you're brilliant or whatever you're wasted so then where is the adage to say uh, go to school my my son or my daughter then you'll be okay then it's a fallacy then why should we do it and that's the biggest problem that we're having now so it's important that uh, as a country, we look at this issue holistically. We should not just do it for voting purposes or campaigning. It's, it's not right. And then playing around with numbers, like I said earlier on, to say, yeah, now we're going to bring 1.3 billion to absorb them to the system. Tell them for 12 months. Then 12 months again, they must be at your doorstep again, asking for employment again. It can't be like that. The long-term solution, like I'm saying, mm -hmm. is to fix the economy. Let's fix the economy, then everything right, everything will go will go right. Dr. Gumede, much appreciated for coming in. Let me thank my earlier guest also, uh, who was uh, part of this conversation. That uh, Dr. Tachalo Tibela, also just uh, the youngest doctor there, uh, who's unemployed, uh, talking about uh, her challenges. I mean, getting sound advice from uh, the good uh, Dr. Gumede uh, himself there. But Doc, much appreciated for coming this thank evening. You. Uh, well, Dr. Tachalu Tibela there also just joining us via Zoom, just talking about the plight, uh, the promises, uh, you know, that have been given to them. But currently, nothing has been uh, going on uh, there. Um, on that note, uh, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of uh, Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about uh, this episode by simply sending us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV or you can simply just call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bahaito, ridiri lehole kane nakitabo mulokwani and the rest of the team, it's good night for us and thank you for watching.